Every day you deal with so much. So many different things are being thrown at you, wearing you down mentally, spiritually, and physically. And the reality is that you need to learn how to protect your peace. And I'm going to give you five ways to do that. My name is Stefan Labossier, aka Stefan Speaks, back with another life advice video today. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be just for your overall life. And again, we're talking about five ways to protect your peace. Before we get started, as always, be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and comment below. Now, like I said, we, we all deal with this or have dealt with this, most of us. Some of y'all may have figured it out already, but if you're watching this video, it's probably because you want to learn this. And that's the fact that we're not protecting our peace. We are not creating a life balance that allows us to thrive, allows us to be energetic, allows us to be as productive as we can be, and to live the quality of life we deserve and we desire. And the truth is we get so caught up in this world that we let life run us instead of running our life. We don't take control. We don't slow things down. And that needs to change. So I'm going to lay out for you the five ways. You know, and of course, this, there can be more to add to this list. Feel free to comment below to give some more suggestions. But here are five I want to convey to you. So way number one to protect your peace is take a day off. Now, I say it like that because I cannot tell you how many people are literally working physically or mentally every single day. For some of you, it's literally you go from work to dealing with kids to dealing with family, maybe your relationship, all these other things going on. It's just nonstop. Your brain barely shuts off. You don't get no time to yourself. It's just doing, doing responsibility after responsibility and it wears you out. Listen, even God rested on the seventh day. None of us are superman or superwoman. We need time to relax and recharge. So it's very important that you take time to, to create a schedule that allows you to have at least one full day off. One day that you are not bothered with life, with work, with anybody. So let me let me put it this way for if you're married or in a relationship, all right? Because I know, again, husbands and wives, it's the same thing. No day off, burnt out, and they don't have much to give to each other because they're so burnt out. But let's just say you're in a relationship, and so now you and your partner agree. Okay, let's say Friday is the man's day off. And on Friday, you don't bother him. If, you know, you're, you, uh, if you're a woman or you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you tell your partner, they don't get to bother you that day. If you got kids, they don't get to bother you that day. You, they leave you alone. That's your day to do whatever you want. Relax, recharge, go chill somewhere. If you got a man cave, hang out there. Whatever you want to do, but you don't have to deal with anything. And then let's say Saturday is her day. And so now it's reverse. That's her day to take off, to just do her, relax, recharge, and you take care of the responsibilities that day, all right? Create a balance that allows both of you guys to get time you need for yourself, all right? That's going to be very helpful. Now, if you're single, you might be saying, well, who the hell am I going to do this with? <laughs> I'm by myself. I don't have that kind of help. I get it, but you, you might have friends or family members you can create the same kind of arrangement with. You got to really start to think outside the box. So if it's friends, let's say it's single mothers. You got friends who are single mothers, all right? Or one has is a relationship, whatever. The point is, you have a friend. They can watch your kids one day. That's your day off. Now you'll watch their kids the other day with your kids. That's their day off, all right? For men, it may not be a kid's thing. It may just be, again, you're just working, 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 and you don't realize that you're grinding so hard, you're not taking a day off. And of course, this can apply to women as well. But you need to identify, okay, I'm going to select this day. This day, I don't do any work. I don't do anything. I get to chill, maybe go out, maybe watch TV, whatever. The point is, take a day off. That's the point. The point is, I don't care how you do it. I don't care how you make it happen. But everyone needs a day. That's it. At least one. It don't have to be two. It don't have to be three. That's nice if you can get that many. But at least one day for yourself to relax and recharge. This will help you immensely in protecting your peace. Second way now to protect your peace is do not engage in arguments and negative talk, all right? But even more specifically, arguments. Listen, we have to understand that 
Positive energy, negative energy is very transferable. And when we engage or we enter into environments that are negative, it is very likely we're going to take some of that energy with us, all right? And it's very easy for you to go from having a decent day or a good day and then you engage in an argument and now your whole day turns left. Everything goes wrong and now it's a domino effect where other stuff starts to go wrong or things start to look worse than they are. You know how it is? Like you can be having a good day and everything looks better than what it should be because you're just looking from a positive lens. But when you're having a negative day, everything looks worse than it should be. So you've got to be very careful in identifying what are negative discussions or negative arguments or arguments in general that you don't need to be bothered with. Like every argument is not something that you have to enter into or engage in. If someone wants to argue, let them argue by themselves. You want nothing wrong with having healthy adult conversation, nothing wrong with discussing issues because that can actually be very therapeutic. When you can talk to someone and resolve things, that's an amazing, wonderful thing. But when it has to be an argument, when it's disrespectful talk, when it's a negative tone, when it's attacking each other with words, this is a problem. And again, it does not allow you to protect your peace and it has a lingering effect. And now what created a bad day can become a bad week and a bad month. You gotta be really careful to, 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 not, to, to, to limit the amount of negative energy that you take on day to day, all right? And so argument is one of the most easily avoidable things because you have a choice. You can choose to not argue. You got to not let your pride get in the way. You know what I'm saying? You got to not let this desire to be overly competitive and win this argument. No, it's not necessary. Like recognize And recognize when people are just trying to argue and not trying to listen. Like you got to have a, a, learn to have a sense of, okay, they're not really here to even entertain whatever facts you want to present. They're not here to understand your position. They're here to simply say what they want to say and they will stop at nothing to say it and they will over talk you, they will not listen, they will dismiss you. Once you recognize you're dealing with someone like that, stop it. It's not worth it. Your peace is worth so much more than that. So do not engage in arguments. Which brings me to the third one. The third way to protect your peace is remove negative influences. So, okay, we, we talked about arguments and we're going to limit those, right? And negative talk. But let's think about negative influences. So, excuse me, I, I realized at one time where there was a time back in the days I used to be on Facebook, all right? And I would be seeing certain posts. And when I saw certain posts, it would like irk my nerves. Like whenever these type, when these specific people would say something or when certain things were said, it would get under my skin. And I would notice that my energy, my spirit would change when I would see this and I would go into a very negative mindset. And then I had to ask myself, why am I looking at this? Why am I following these people? Why am I uh, uh, allowing this to be on my feed? So whether it's Instagram, YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook, whatever, whatever it is, recognize and locate what are negative influences. Some of the, the comment sections on certain pages are extremely toxic. And though it may be entertaining at times, okay, I, I'll admit it can get entertaining, you really got to ask yourself, okay, but what mood does it put you in? What mindset does it put you in? How much does it affect you? All right. And, and, and should you really go back there? You got to be really mindful of what you can handle. Now, some people can handle more than others, because if you have a lot of positive energy in your life, maybe that negative energy doesn't sway you too much. But if you're already not having the greatest day or whatever, or you're already struggling with being positive and keeping your peace, and then you go into these negative sites and pages and comment sections or whatever, you literally, again, can go down a rabbit hole and it only gets worse. But it doesn't stop with social media. It, it's, it's about the TV you're watching. It's about the music you're listening to. Any of it. You've got to really start to become aware of what's pouring in negative energy into you. All right? And what then robs you of your peace. Because you don't realize how that, that, that influence is swaying you one way or the other. And when you start to eliminate those things, you will see it. So here's a great thing to do. 
go on a social media fast. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, Steph, if we're on a fast, how are we going to watch your videos? Listen, it's okay. <laughs> you can take a break. I'll, I'll be here when you come back. It's not a problem. Take your break. Take a social media fast, all right? Take a music fast. Take a t I literally one time went uh, seven days, no music, no uh, social media, no TV. I know that sounds like you're living in the woods, but it was good. Like, it really helped cleanse me. And then when I, when I reintroduced music into my world, I reintroduced more peaceful music. And again, I noticed the difference. Now, I'm not going to lie. Now, I kind of like balance it by there's certain places that I might listen to certain music. But if I'm home, I don't listen to that music. I might listen to more peaceful music. So you'll learn how to balance it to where it doesn't mean you can never listen to certain things. It doesn't mean you can never watch certain things. But you want to limit it. And you want to create a proper balance that allows you to what? Protect your peace and keep positivity more at the forefront. Because when you do that, you will live a higher quality of life. You will be more productive. You will be more energetic. You will be more happy. You would exude the energy that will create more opportunities for you. So start to locate the negative influences. Now, I was going to move to the next point, but something hit me that I had to remind you of. Negative influences include friends and family. All right? And, and, and you got to start recognizing what kind of circles you're running in, what kind of people you're exposing yourself to. Now, I don't want you to run and just go cut off family members and friends because they're negative. I, what do I always say? You got to address it first. It may be a fixable issue, all right? And if it can be fixed, cool. If it cannot be fixed, then yes, limit interaction as much as possible. Remove them if possible. You, you don't have to feel obligated to hold on to negative people who are robbing you of your peace when you're trying to make things better and they're unwilling to do so. You are not obligated to, to, to suffer and, and to be a, a victim of their negative energy. You got to be mindful of that. And again, what kind of people are you exposing yourself to? And correct those things. Make those adjustments because all of that can push you in the wrong direction. There's a lot of people who aren't where they're supposed to be because they got a lot of the wrong people in their lives. And they entertain and engage with the wrong people. I don't want that to be you. So take an inventory of all of those things. Make the corrections. Protect your peace. So now we get to number four. And number four is prayer and meditation. All right? Now, um, I think some people may feel some way about the word meditation and they think maybe that doesn't go well with being a believer. I don't know. I just feel the need to say that because I've seen that argument be made before. But I believe prayer and meditation kind of go hand in hand in a lot of ways. And the reality is that it's a great way to protect your peace because it kind of pulls you away from the craziness going on in your life. It kind of helps slow you down for a moment. The reality is that, again, a lot of us, and I say us because it, this has been my problem and I'm consistently working on it. We get so caught up in working, moving, shaking, doing things that, again, our brains are moving 100 miles per hour. And we don't realize how much that is exhausting us. That mental exhaustion is a real thing. You may not always see it. People may not understand it, but they don't realize your brain has not shut off and that has worn you out and how it affects you in all various ways. So to take a step back and pray and meditate is to slow the brain down, is to take uh, some, some better breathing and, and to relax yourself and to get yourself into a better rhythm. Now, I would suggest you start your day with prayer and meditation because what I have learned and experienced, all right, is that like if you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is go to your phone or go to your computer, you're immediately having your brain go into overdrive and boom, 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 start working. And it sets the tone for this kind of crazy day, this scrambled mind day. It's like it, it's just it goes from there. Whereas if you wake up, go drink some water. Go, go stretch maybe, do some prayer, do some meditation, you know, put on some soothing music in the morning. And again, if you have work in the morning, maybe you get up a little bit earlier so you can get this morning routine in before you have to get ready for work or school or whatever's going on in your life. And so by doing that, you'll notice your day runs smoother. Your day becomes more peaceful. Again, if you don't believe me, just try it. Test it out. I'm telling you it's worth it. You're going to notice an improvement in how your day flows 
when you start your day with prayer and meditation. And you can find where a lot of successful people have morning routines. It is great to add structure into your life because again, that helps the flow of the day go better. That helps you slow things down. That helps you have a greater focus and intention with the day rather than everything is scattered and all over the place. So make that time, pray, meditate, clear your mind, allow yourself to relax, slow things down, and you're going to see things improve from there. And last but not least is sleep and take better care of you. So listen, one thing I have come to realize is that so many of you are sleep deprived, all right? You're trying to run on four or five hours of sleep, maybe six for some of you, and and that might be decent in some cases, but you really want to aim for seven to eight for most people. Now, everyone can be different, so this is not like a set thing that everyone has to have seven, eight. I, I, there's, there's actually a thing called, don't quote me, but I believe it's a thing called super sleepers where they don't actually need that many hours. But that's the, a small group of people. Typically, the average person is going to need seven to eight good hours of sleep. And notice I said good hours. It's one thing to go to bed. It's nothing to have peaceful rest. All right. So you want to start to enhance your sleep experience. All right. That may sound weird to some. It's like, well, it means enhance the experience. It's just sleep. Nah, like you want to make sure you, if you can, get a good bed. If you need better pillows, um, I sleep with a diffuser on and put essential oils in there. All right. That helps with the sleeping, that helps with the breathing, the relaxing, releasing the stress. All right. It might be prayer and meditation before you go to sleep as well. You, you, there's also other tips, and, and maybe I'll do a video later, but look it up where ways to improve your quality of sleep. That's important because some of you may be going to bed, but you still wake up restless and ruffled, and it's like you got no sleep at all. It was horrible quality. So we want to sleep, but we want to get improved quality of sleep. We also, as I said, want to take better care of ourselves. Our, what we put in our body contributes to our mood, our lack of focus, our struggles with energy. And again, it, it essentially robs up of our peace because now if we're cranky, if we're tired, we're worn out, how can we be positive, loving, peaceful human beings? It just really isn't going to work that way. So you got to start to evaluate what am I putting in my body? What adjustments can I make? I won't get too deep into it, but a couple things I've done, all right, I've done for myself so you can look into it and consider it. I've added intermittent fasting to my uh, regimen. Uh, I also added eating from my blood type as part of what I eat. I'm also plant-based. I'm not saying you got to do all those things, all right, or any of those things. I, I am saying they were very helpful for me. I do believe they can be very helpful for you or some of you listening. But look into it. Whatever it is, start to examine, okay, what is actually healthy for you? And, and I, to, to bring it back to eating for your blood type, the reason why I, I loved it is because I learned there were certain things that I thought were healthy food but it didn't agree with my body. And that's the thing. Not all foods agree with your body, even if you don't think they're harmful. So by learning what you're allergic to, learning maybe what is good for your blood type, these things can help you understand what may be good or bad for your body. Once you get your body into better alignment, everything else starts to fall into place. And again, yes, that, uh, it, it, that enhances your peace, that enhances your focus, your energy, all these things. So eating better, and again, better as far as what agrees with your body, all right? And again, look this stuff up, do some more research. I'm not a doctor, but I am sharing with you what what I've done for myself, what I've seen become beneficial for other individuals and could possibly be beneficial for you. But eat better and drink more water. That water is important. You know what I'm saying? We, We are mostly made up of water and dehydration is a real thing. A lot of people don't realize how dehydrated they really are and how that's affecting their hormones, how that's affecting, again, clarity, focus, energy, all these different things that make it hard for you to protect your peace. So when you start to take a much well rounded approach to improving your overall quality of life and really put your peace as a priority, all right, you can start to see so many things improve, start to be so much happier. Everything gets better from there. So don't neglect it. Be sure to do what you need to do.
Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. God has amazing blessings that he is going to give you, but you got to make sure you're not getting in your own way. Today, we're going to discuss three signs you're blocking God's blessings. My name is